the lack of ideas, really. It was a, there was no movement off the ball. Every, every time a Spurs player got it in the first 20 minutes, and that set the pattern for the whole of the game, they had no options on the ball. And they didn't look as if they were going to make runs. They didn't want to hurt themselves running-wise. They looked like a team that had come back maybe from Greece and travelled and they looked fatigued. But there was no press. We said before the game, I thought they were going to have a little first 10, 15 minutes, have a real press at Arsenal with some of the mistakes that they've been making and put their back four and the centre-backs under pressure and the goalie. Never materialised. And they it sort of plodded all the way through until they went 10 men down. And sometimes, you know what, when you go 10 men down, sorry, one man down, you go 10 men, the crutch, you know... The, you just relax. You think we've got nothing to lose now. We're losing the game. You can't judge a team then. You, they, they had a go then, but that was too late. And uh, it was a very lacklustre performance from Tottenham. It really was. What did you make of it as a contest, Michael? Yeah, I, I thought uh, I thought the same. And the only time that, that Tottenham got into the Arsenal box was the, the time that they scored in the first half, which is unbelievable when you think of the quality up front that Tottenham have got. And Jose Mourinho, on paper before the game, looked as if he was going... Um, going for the jugular, let's say. And then you take into account um, Obama Yang being left out, so Arsenal without their best player. But you would never have guessed it. I mean, Arsenal definitely deserved the win. 2-1 uh, was, uh, was also, you could say, flattened Spurs, even though they pushed a little bit at the end for that equaliser. Indeed, and we'll have a look at all that in a moment. But we are three down, one to go on the, in the Premier League. That all began uh, on the south coast at St Mary's with a huge win and three points for Graham Potter and Brighton. 2-1. They won at Southampton. Five goals uh, for Leicester at Sheffield United after the removal of their manager, Chris Wilder, uh, getting hit for five. Kelechi Iheanacho got a hat-trick there for Brendan Rodgers' team. Arsenal have won the North London derby. Up next, it is third against fifth. Manchester United against West Ham United. And, of course, the match week rounded off with a Monday night football. Can the champions get back to winning ways? They're at Molyneux to face Wolves. Well, we know about the size of Manchester City's lead. Manchester United uh, will go back into second if they beat West Ham. West Ham, though, will go level on points with fourth place Chelsea with a game in hand if they were to win at Old Trafford. Spurs have missed the opportunity to go level on points with West Ham. And now Arsenal are within four points of their North London rivals. We wanted to, to win this game for, for us, for the team, uh, and as well for the fans. Uh, I think they're happy, even if uh, we missed them in, uh, today in the stadium, but it was really important for us to, to win the derby. Because this is our problem when we are winning, we have um, some problem to manage the game at the end, even uh, 11, 11 against 10. This is where we have to, to improve a lot, but at the end we, we won, we need to appreciate the uh, the three points and think about first day. Of course, it's really important to win this kind of game, and uh, for us, it's really good for for the, the next of the season. At the same time, the coach uh, tell us that everyone's gonna play because we play every three days. Uh, obviously, it's not easy to to stay on the bench in big games, but it's a part of uh, of football. Uh, I don't think there is anything against uh, against Oba. It's just a decision of the coach. I will let you ask him about this, but. Course. I don't think there is anything wrong with uh, with this. And therein lies the irony. Had Aubameyang been starting and been captain, Lacazette wouldn't have been on the pitch and wouldn't have scored the penalty. Now, before we just get to the awarding of it, Tottenham again, as we discussed at, at half-time, mm. didn't help themselves before the, the challenge, did they? No, they didn't. And the, the thing with Tottenham and the way Tottenham were today, with the players that they had starting up front, you was thinking that they were going to cause Arsenal problems simply because of the way Arsenal have been playing recently. You know. The, 14 goals that they've scored previous to this game. Seven of them have been from individual mistakes. So you're thinking that Tottenham are going to put Arsenal under pressure. I, it didn't happen. It didn't happen at all. It was very lacklustre. They looked like the gaffer said. They looked like a team that's tired. And I think that Arsenal very much had total control of the game in the way they passed the ball. Yeah, you see here, I think we all sort of discussed during the game, that they're very wide here, about to play the... The goal kick, but then as soon as they lose the ball and Pepe does really well to read it, you see that the fullbacks just can't get in quick enough. Doherty in particular can't get close enough to Lacazette, and the ball from Pepe is brilliant, brilliant. in between the centre half and the fullback. He misses the ball, Lacazette, uh, but he gets caught afterwards. And uh, there's a so big come debate on, whether it was a penalty or not. Yes or no from all three of you. What do you think? Um, unfortunately, yeah, his touch is poor there. He's had he's had a shot at it and. He's missed oh, it. Penalty we, on we, that we, penalty writing. Um, for me, I'll be I'll be happy to take that penalty, but I wouldn't be happy for that to be awarded. Because look, he has a shot. If he misses, 
it's, it's over the bar, it's gone, so yeah, you don't no, get no, it. No, but I, listen, Arsenal, Arsenal deserve to win the game, but there's no penalty there for me. He hasn't impeded him. He's missed the ball completely. Now, I'd like to ask the question, if that ball flies over the bar, yeah. say he shoots and he hits it over the bar, would the referee give that decision? No. Would VAR give the decision as a penalty? No. No way. He thinks he's being impeded from his angle where he is, Michael Oliver, but it's VAR that really have got to yeah, step in. They've got to step it's, in. It's when you've missed something, and, and, and from the angles of referee, it's all about the angles on the on-field on referee. He's missed something there. There's no contact. He hasn't impeded him and put him off, made him miss the ball. He's missed the ball because his technique wasn't good. Michael? No penalty for me. And even Lacazette in his interview just yeah. said, I was lucky to get the penalty. So, I mean, there's probably three, three no's there, but, you know, two people that matter said it was... It well, it was one, really, in, in Paul Tini in, in, in VAR, VAR, wasn't it? So let's speak to Dermot Gallagher. Derm, uh, we've got three no's in here. <laughs> <laughs> Had you been Paul Tini and, and looking at that, what would you have said? Um, well, I think Lacazette summed it up, didn't he? When he said it, he thought he was lucky, and if the player himself thinks it's lucky, I'm in his camp, I think he's lucky. I think the, the problem is, Steve, that if you look where Michael Oliver is, he sees um, Sanchez come in. Um, this is also interesting because the minute it's happened, th this is his view, this is his angle. Mm -hmm. And you see, the challenge goes in there. So in his head, he's thinking that uh, Sanchez is going to take Lacazette and he goes down. In his mind, that's what he computes. When you follow it through, you see there, Lacazette actually kicks into Sanchez. But I think Michael Oliver immediately says to the VAR, look, this is what I've seen, this is what I think, this is what I'm comfortable with. And I actually think it's a difficult one for the VAR to overturn because what Michael Oliver has fed back to him, um, he can understand. So I, I don't think it falls within the criteria. But... I, I go back to what Lacazette said at, at the start. I think it's right. lucky to be given. So, sorry, Dermot, is that not a 100% case where he then sends him over to the, the screen, the monitor, to look again himself? Because it is about the angle that Michael Oliver's got, which is the problem. And then once you've looked at VAR and slowed it down a bit and looked at it, then you've got to say, surely, to the on-field referee, you need to go and have a look at this yourself. So you're actually almost saying to him, look, you might not think it's the same decision after you've seen it on screen. Yeah, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of, lot of truth what you say there, Glenn. But this is Michael's angle, and this is what I said at the start. I think he sees the leg up and he thinks he takes Lacazette's leg. I don't think he, he sees the, the miss, he sees the ball go off. But he then, as you see, you see him talking to Paul Tierney, and he's explaining what he's seen and what he's given. And I think on what Paul Tierney's been told and what he's seen, it's difficult for him to overturn that. So I think he's stuck with the on-field decision. I think that was the problem there, that the referee made the on-field decision and he's made it from one side and when we see it from behind the goal, it's a different decision to what uh, the decision that Michael Oliver saw. The problem I've got with it, Durham, is, is that um, Paul Tierney, who's up there, has got the best angle of it. You know, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm delighted Arsenal got the three points, <laughs> of course. And this week, Arsenal are benefiting from another mistake for me from upstairs because what I'm saying, is, yes, he's had a poor touch, but bam, there it is. He's clear to yeah. shoot. So what's happened is, is if I'm in there, I'm saying he's not been he's not been stopped or impeded to take that shot. So yeah. if I'm a Spurs fan, there's no way that if we've got VAR, they can't overturn that because, for me, he's not fouled him yet. But Dermot, surely that's the angle we've seen from behind the goal is what VAR sees and Michael Oliver, Oliver can't see. And, and from that view, we're all agreeing here, it's clear and obvious yeah. that he's missed the ball and he hasn't been impeded. Yeah. So to, to think that he stays with the on-field, let the referee see that from another angle on the screen and then I'm sure he makes another decision. Or he keeps the same decision, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But surely that's how VAR should be used. Yeah, but I think on this occasion, then, as I said, what Michael Oliver's fed back, he said he's seen Sanchez come in at speed with his leg raised, and he feels that, you know, we think between us, obviously, he's gone to block the ball. Um, he thinks he's gone to impede the man, and that's what he's fed back, that's what he thinks. And I think because of what you see with Sanchez's leg high, I can understand why it's difficult for the VAR to overturn that. But I think you make a lot of good sense when you say if, if he had gone to the screen and he had seen that angle from behind the goal, no. we could well have seen a much different decision. Yeah, but this is the problem we have, Durham, because, like, Paul Tierney's up there, you're explaining it. Why can't Paul Tierney explain it? Because he's the one who's talking to Michael Oliver. 
Because I would like to know how Paul Tierney can look at that and see that Lacazette has had his shot, then he's been impeded. He's missed the ball, and but it's, it's still a penalty. And I'll be saying this, if I'll be saying this, if this was against Arsenal, I'd be absolutely livid. I'm, I'm livid for my Tottenham mates. Of course I am, because there it is. If he scores, nothing said. If he hits it over the bar, nothing said. Mm. So how can you give a penalty for that? And you're able to look at it again and you stick with that decision. It's ludicrous. Mm. Well, I, I can't answer that right here, can I? It's, no problem, Dan. It, it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's all about the process and at the moment, um, we've spoke many times this season, right, about how the process frustrates us at times. But that's how it is, you know. It's, it, he's fed it back, as I say. Paul Tierney's looked at it. I think it's difficult on what he's been told to overturn that. But, you know, maybe we saw earlier in the week that said they're going to ask for some feedback and maybe surely, they can alter the process. it's not slightly. about overturning anything. It's about getting the right decisions. I'm afraid. It doesn't matter if you're overturning things. You know, let him overturn it himself. That's what I'm saying. Go and have a look at the screen. But from behind the goal, it's pretty clear that he misses the ball. There's no, he hasn't been impeded. And from that angle, I'm sure Michael Oliver will look at it and go, actually, it looks completely different there. It's no penalty. Okay. And that's surely how we've got to use VAR. We could debate this long into the night. So just stay there for a moment, um, Dermot. The penalty, six out of six for Lacazette. Never in doubt. Belton, absolute brilliant penalty. Perfect penalty. Just skims the post, hits the side net, and you just cannot save that. He looked confident. He picked his spot before, you know, there was no watching the keeper or anything. He was just going to hit it with decent amount of pace, and uh, and it skimmed the, uh, the, the post. Fantastic penalty. In the same end, of course, where Lamella scored the wonder goal in the first half, which we'll look at later. But then he went, Dermot, from hero to villain, uh, <laughs> and they ended with a man advantage as well. Any issue with the two yellows for you? Well, the, the first one is just a, a reckless tackle, isn't it? You, you just can't tackle it. It's a trailing legs caught him as well. So he gets a yellow card. This can be a yellow card every day of the week. There, one leg, two legs. So he's always going to get a yellow card for that, Steve. What about the second one? But the second one, why would you even consider doing this when you're on a yellow card? Why would you consider doing this anyhow, that area of the pitch? It's, it's just so blatant. Um, the biggest surprise to me was he looked shocked to be getting a second yellow card. I mean, he... He may well have, on another day, had a straight red card for that, but he was certainly going to get dismissed. Probably, I'll tell you why he'll, pro he'll probably think that, because as, as, when, you're, when you're, as a kid, you're, you're told to, to, to get, that, get yourself across, so your arm has to get across and it has to be stiff. There's no elbow in that. Now, the problem that it is is that you say that, why is he surprised? He's surprised simply because he's going to get ready to hold a player off, because that's what you're taught. But now, you know, probably that's something else we've got to now look at because you can't do that. He's not tried to elbow him. No. He's, he's tried to make sure the stiff arm and it's caught him. But what we see now is, you know, the player like there, obviously it looks a lot worse than it is. I think that's a foul. Yeah. You know? I, I, think, I, think, I think that's I a foul. I can understand it's, why. I can, see, I, can I, can see, see I can see it's a foul, but you, you can't say... What I'm saying is, is that why he's surprised he's getting sent off because you are told to try and yeah. I think the, hold yeah, the man the, off. The surprise is because mm. he's got possession of the ball. Yeah. When you've got possession of the ball, you think, you know, you might think back to Gaza and people like Ozzy Ardiles I play with. He used to hold people off. And that's what, because you're in the possession of the ball, you think you could, you've got licence to do that. If you haven't got possession, you go in and do that. Yeah. You're going to get a foul against them. Mm. So I think that's the that's why he's surprised. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's a foul. If you put you fa whether you've got possession or you haven't, if you put your hand in someone's throat and face, it's a foul. Yeah, I can understand why it's. I don't like that. I don't like to see that because Glenn mentioned. I grew up watching Gaza. He would have been sent off every game. Mm. If, that, if that's a yellow card, he would have been sent off every every time he got the ball. He used his arms. My dad used to tell me all the time: watch Gaza, watch Paul Gaza. Whenever you've got the ball and you're running. Get your arms up, straight arms. Keep people away from you. Build your strength up so you can keep people, protect the ball. So I hate seeing a yellow card for that, but I do understand to the viewing public, to referees, that they see a swinging arm and yeah. it connects sort of neck, around the neck area. Mm. I can see why it's a, a second yellow. I'm not going to sit here and argue it, but I don't like it because it's, it's almost, that's part of the game, protecting the ball. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Derma, thank you very much indeed. I mean, we may speak to him. Uh, later in the show. Now, one man who will certainly have an opinion on all that is the Spurs boss. Here he is, Jose Mourinho. No post-match interviews for referees? No, not at the moment. It's a pity. <laughs> well, um, I think we played really bad in the first half. Um, the 1-1 one -one 
was not a, a fair reflection of the first half. We were poor, defending bad, no intensity, no pressing. <laughs> Even in terms of uh, creating attacking football, some important players hiding. First half, really bad. In the second half, we only had space to improve, which we did. And then is a question for a, a question, but an impossible question <laughs> because they don't speak. But it would be a question for uh, for Michael to uh, to answer, and uh, probably Paul Tierney too, uh, because he was the the VAR. But according to to Kevin Friend, um, <coughs> the referee told that. He had a clear vision, and uh, the VAR didn't want to go against. But let's go back to the beginning. We played very bad in the first in the first half. Uh, in the second half, the game was uh, under control, so we recovered what we lost in the first half, which was the control of the game. In the second half, we had the control of uh, the game. We made changes to try to win it. And um, and then uh, is a penalty, and after penalty uh, a second yellow card for Lamela. But even so, uh, the team in the last 20, 25 minutes with 11 or with 10, the team tried to to get a different result. That's it, because he's closer than uh, than me. But then when I watch in the in the iPad. Um, it is what it is, but um, for you, is the big issue that uh, Arsenal fans with a with a season with a season ticket in one of these chairs is the only one that I would accept a different view because then that's the passion speaking. A part of that, I wouldn't accept that anyone has a different view because it's it's too obvious. One of the